1.2? That's a little bit early, isn't it? Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, with the lack of recent hotfixes to Diablo 4 and the massive patch looming over our heads, possibly hitting any day now, you might think that not much is happening and, well, you'd be a bit wrong. So let's break down what is happening today in Diablo 4. From information on builds of the game being tested internally by the devs to the current drama controversy going on right now, a bit of information about the upcoming Battle Pass, an update on the race to 100 for hardcore players, and then a slight update on the actual status of the big patch that we've all been waiting on. First up then, let's talk about something a little bit spicy. You can see this over on Diablo4.cc, which has a ton of information about the game, but they found a few extra versions of the game's server currently up and running that only select players have access to. Specifically, those players would be the developers, and so these are their internal branches running different versions of the game for testing purposes. The 1.0.2.4 and 0.0.1.4 are of course a known quantity, but then very recently we had the addition of 1.1 and 1.2. If those numbers are any indication, these are more major build differences. And there are a couple of theories running about this as to what they could actually be. One of them is that 1.1 is the big patch that we've been told is coming, the one that we've been wanting to see. Tons of balance changes, lots of bug fixes and stability updates, and if we are lucky, also a little bit of quality of life too. 1.2, however, is a bit of an unknown. In this scenario, if 1.1 is the upcoming patch, then 1.2 2 is likely the patch that would hit right around season 1, the one that would apply a lot of the actual meteor changes for that season. The one that in theory would have stuff like the nightmare dungeon changes that we were told about, where they'll be able to teleport directly to activated nightmare dungeons like their away point, which honestly in itself as a concept just really excites me. Cutting out the travel time when running nightmare dungeons just makes them so much more appealing. But back on topic, that is one option. The other option of course, which is sort of fitting with 1.1 and 1.2 being more serious numbers, usually going up a full decimal point like that in a patch indicates a really important one. It could possibly mean that 1.1 is actually Season 1 itself, and then 1.2 would be the initial testing zone for Season 2. Either way, this is the makings of good things for sure. More internal servers means more internal testing, and that means more updates for the game are already being worked on to keep things feeling fresh. Personally, I'm just waiting with open arms for the big patch that we were told is coming. It supposedly has got a lot of buffs in it, and as someone who has tried a fair amount of different builds just to try and experience with the game has to offer, it'd be really great if some of the weaker current playstyles became strong. Past that, we have a bit of strange drama developing in the community over the last couple of days that has sort of split the player base in half, essentially. Quite simply, there are a lot of players who did not originally realize what the season mechanic would mean and are genuinely upset that they have to roll new characters and start fresh if they want to take part in Season 1. I don't know if I'm out of touch or something, but I'm someone who likes ARPGs. I played a large majority of the seasons in Diablo 3, so that concept is just ingrained in my mind. It's just an accepted thing, and I generally think that it made the game more fun to have that too. Diablo 4 seems to have gathered a ton of attention from people who have never ever really dived into an ARPG, or at least those who haven't in the last 10 to 15 years where that concept of seasons has really started to become more popularized. After all, even Diablo 3 didn't actually have seasons for nearly two years after its launch, so people who played a ton of that might not have even realized there were seasons in that game because again, it was two years after. The result is these players finding out what seasons actually actually mean now and having real complaints about it. And rather than try and spend my opinion on them, let's just show the actual things that people have been saying first. Like our friend Paul here, a gaming focused writer for Forbes. He mentions not doing previous Diablo seasons and asks if he can progress the battle pass on an Eternal Realm character rather than making a seasonal one. The response from Rod Ferguson, GM of Diablo, says yes, you do actually need to have a seasonal character if you want to take part in the questline, mechanics, journey, and the battle pass itself. The journey we know to be some sort of chaptered challenge system that rewards you points towards the battle pass. The specific mention of seasonal quest line and mechanics, however, is very promising. Lots of the complaints that I've seen about the seasons in general are things like, oh, the season's just going to be like starting the game over again from the beginning with no meaningful changes, and that sucks. But this specifically points out two of the things that will be quite different. As to what extent that they will matter as far as how big of a difference they'll make, we do not know yet. But the point is that the season is supposed to give you a fresh sense of progression, but also give you different content 
to enjoy within the same game. I mean, the same, but different. But it is this chain of tweets that actually gets us started in the direction of the conversation we're going to have. Another tweet in this chain is from this player who says that they are a new Diablo player and a new dad. They have an hour a day to play at most and their current character is only level 11. So you're saying that I should basically not even play this game then, right? And that is just the totally wrong way of looking at it, honestly. Look, I get that. I'm a father of 15 and I have one hour a day to play. It's a, it's, it's a meme in the Diablo community right now, but it is also a real thing, of course, and that's why it's it's become a meme is because there are a lot of people like this who just cannot be sinking six plus hours a day into the game and that's fair for those people progression is a lot slower but what is being missed here is that the seasonal realm is a separate place it's not like the whole game gets reset when season one releases it doesn't delete your currently existing characters it is a separate entity where things are a bit different if you are someone who is only level 20 when season one comes out you probably would get more out of just continuing your eternal realm character actually enjoy the base game a little bit, maybe join in when it comes to season two. But if you are playing one hour a day, you still have a lot to gain without even considering the seasons. As is mentioned here in another tweet where someone asks as a new player to Diablo, I can still play my main character when the season drops, I just won't be able to access seasonal content, correct? And Rod responds, correct. You're able to keep playing in the Eternal Realm if you do not want to participate in seasonal activities. When a season ends, seasonal characters will also move to the Eternal Realm so that you can continue them if you want to. That is the big thing right there. Again, the main wave of complaints that I've seen pop up about the season system are from players with low playtime availability. They are missing one really big key component in every complaint I've seen. Seasons are not forced. They do not delete your Eternal Realm characters. They don't delete your progress. They just give you an optional way to start a new character and experience some fresh new content. But your original characters still exist. They are still playable. And if you're still halfway through the campaign, there is nothing stopping you from finishing it there. Season Seasons are not a deterrent for slower players, they are not a punishment for it, nor are they a reward for the faster players either. They are simply an optional, secondary way to play the game that keeps it feeling fresh over longer periods of time. I hope if anyone who is unhappy about Seasons is watching this, that might help them understand what they really are and actually make them a little bit more comfortable with it. Personally, I am someone who loves the concept of Seasons and I'll get a ton of enjoyment out of them, but I can understand the fear of it all if you just haven't tried it before and you have low playtime availability. Plus, that we have confirmation that the first 1,000 players officially reached level 100 in hardcore mode, meaning that they got to level 100 without dying even once, which is absolutely insane. As promised, they will have their names etched into the stone monument of Lilith that is now at the Blizzard campus, and this is a really just really cool way of being remembered as far as your Diablo 4 journey. That statue is awesome, and the actual list of names will be coming out in a few days if you want to look through it, but this is mostly just to say, hey, 1,000 people officially made managed to complete that gargantuan task, and we aren't even three weeks into the game from the start of Early Access. That is just a, a massive undertaking, and as much as 1,000 people succeeded, you have to remember that exponentially more than that both tried and failed. It is not easy to do this, and the people who managed it should absolutely be applauded. Finally, we have an update on the massive patch that we've been told about, we've been waiting for. In the Campfire Chat stream, it was understood by many players that the patch was pretty much finished, and they were looking to push it out sooner rather rather than later, any time now, right? But this tweet from the community manager for the game seems to indicate it could be a little bit longer than a lot of people were thinking it would be. We thought it could be literally any day, but this seems to indicate at minimum, we are waiting until next week. It could be even longer than that, and if that is the case, I hope they start bringing back hot fixes, as they haven't done one for almost a week now, and with Druid Loot Table still being a really hot topic that they have said they could have done before the big patch, I am hopeful that along with some other changes, this can come before the bigger update in just more hot fixes. But again, they haven't done a hotfix in almost a week now. That's about it for today then everyone, a roundup of what is going on right now in the Diablo 4 world, the internal testing servers and what that could mean, the controversy around seasons and how that would affect the battle pass as well, the first 1000 players to reach level 100 in hardcore mode completed, and just a slight update on the big patch that we've all been waiting on. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of it all and keep your eyes peeled for the next one. I never really know how often I make these, it is entirely based on what is actually happening with Diablo 4 four around us, and if I think there's something worth sharing with all of you. Like if you liked the video, subscribe with the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice.
to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye